The probe is slowly moved outwards from the midline at about the level of the cricoid cartilage to reveal the lateral border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The interscalene groove lying deep to this can usually then be identified between the bellies of the anterior and medial scalene muscles. The brachial plexus, the roots of which appear as dark hypoechoic round structures at this level, lies within this groove. Note that the scanning hand rests on the patient's neck to maintain a stable image. Puncture site analgesia can then be appropriately placed in the midline of the probe. The injection can be observed on the left side of the image within the medial scalene muscle. Note how in this sequence the needling hand also rests on the patient's neck to allow precise needle tip control. Small adjustments of probe angle and needle position ensure good visibility of the needle tip in the ultrasound image. In this image, the needle appears from the left side and is seen as a white line. The aim is to place the needle tip between the roots of the brachial plexus. A nerve stimulator has been connected here for demonstration purposes only but note how the needle tip needs to be repositioned even once within the groove in order to generate a muscle response. Injection of a small volume confirms spread of local anaesthetic around the brachial plexus and distends the groove. The aim is to surround the roots with local anaesthetic. Local anaesthetic is not always seen to spread evenly around the roots. Rather than inject a large volume, as might be common practice in a landmark technique, here the needle tip is repositioned for further injections. In this case, in order to get better spread over the anterior aspect of the plexus, the needle is withdrawn into the medial scalene muscle and then repositioned carefully towards the anterior scalene side of the groove. The total amount injected is of the order of 10 to 15 milliliters.